you might notice something a little different about the 85. So yes, I did put different wheels and tires on it. So it used to have the stock 16 inch um, turbine wheels, I guess they're called. And I put on a set of CR1 replica wheels on it. And I think they look awesome. So something interesting you have to know, if you want to put any kind of 88 or up Corvette wheels on your early C4, you're gonna need wheel adapters. So here's a closer look. The way that it works is that that adapter bolts onto the factory wheel studs and then it has its own set of wheel studs that stick out of it. So it's a fairly safe way to bolt these wheels on. Now the reason why is because the original wheels that came on this car have a 36 millimeter offset and then any 89 and up Corvette wheel, so the normal saw blades you're used to, ZR1 wheels, even C5 wheels and C6 wheels are going to need these. They have a 56 millimeter offset so they have to you really have to have them in order to get the uh, the tire to sit you know, flush. Right now my wheels are kind of turned, but these front tires will sit pretty much perfectly with the fender lip. The back tires are a little bit out, but that's okay because it kind of gives it a, you know, a mean stance. So, yeah, I think it looks awesome. All right, as you guys can see, the wheels are looking pretty good, but what's not looking good, if you look deep in there, are these brake calipers and rotors. I ended up picking up a set of new rotors for $22 each. O'Reilly's wanted $15 to turn these rotors, if they're even still in spec, so I figured, hey, that's worth the cost right there. I also ended up getting new pads all the way around, new rotors all the way around, so the total cost is like 130 bucks. You look at this side, I've already finished up this side. So that's what the finished product is going to look like, which is much better than before. So hopefully that will make a difference, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you guys what I did to get it to that point. But first we've got to take the wheel off. Alright, so we have our wheels off, and I wanted to show you guys a little bit um, better of a look of the spacers that I had to put on this car. As you saw earlier in the video, I did need them, but what I like about them is that they bolt directly to the studs that are already on the car, and then these are extra studs that stick out. And I like that because it doesn't move, it doesn't wobble, it's, it's solid, and it's all torqued to 100 foot-pounds, so nothing's going to happen to it. Uh, back to the brake rotor. If you look, you know, I have you know somewhat decent pads left on what's in the car there at probably 50%. This brake rotor is okay. Um, there's a way later that I'll show you how to check run out and make sure they're still good. I mean, it is kind of bumpy. You can tell that by the way the pads come out. But, you know, like I said, $10 for a set of front pads, $20 each for a set of rotors. It's really not that expensive to replace them, especially since these will cost 15 bucks for somebody to turn them. It just makes sense. Hey, you know, go ahead and let's just replace them. So. Yeah, let's go ahead and get this off and I'll show you how to disassemble everything and then what I do to end up painting that thing on the car still without having to bleed brakes, so let's do it. I had these torqued 100 foot-pounds, so don't think that I'm just doing this by hand, okay? They were tight, but I didn't film that part. Once you get this second set of lugs off, these brakes are actually hot because I just got done driving it, or at least they're warm. So this just comes off and that's all that is. It's a pretty neat product, I actually like it a lot and it makes me have the wheels that I want. So this rotor is really only held on by the wheel and then also the caliper, okay? So the next step is going to be getting the caliper off. What you first want to do is there's these bolts that go into the guide pins on each end. What is interesting is since I have I have worked on so many C3s before, one of the pains in the butt is C3s. If you ever remove the caliper, removing the um, putting the putting it back on with the brake pads into the pain in the butt. And one thing they did on the C4, which is interesting, is they made it really easy to replace these pads. Once you get this loose, what you're gonna find is that the guide pin actually wants to turn too. And you don't want it to do that so you can use a little mini crescent like me or you can use an actual 
legit wrench, but you just need to get that held while you remove that pin. They did listen to the complaints people had with the C3 and they made the C4 brakes a lot easier to do, at least when it comes to, to pads. So that bolt comes out just like that. And then just kind of push it out like this and ta-da, there's your pads and they're easy to change if that's all you're doing is pads. Okay, so we're obviously doing more than pads. So these ones, they're all scored and stuff pretty crappy but they're, not, they're not too bad I mean it's, it's a lot better than other things I've seen so not too bad and then this caliper part removes with the second bolt right here and then from there you need to take this bracket off which is held on by two large bolts in the back once you get the caliper off I like to just put it right up there it's a really good spot make sure there's no stress on this line make sure it doesn't hang down to get the um, this bracket off, it's fairly easy. It's kind of cool, it says Corvette right here, but there's two bolts on the back side. And you're gonna need a 13 16 socket to get those off. Now, the other thing you're gonna need, which you didn't think you were gonna need for this, is you need a torque wrench. These goes back on at 70 foot pounds, it's important to do it. So, the third thing you need to do is make sure that you grease these, these pins. Okay, so what these do is, they let the brake caliper kind of ride on the uh, on the rotor. If you have uneven pads, it's usually because these pins aren't greased. And it's pretty simple to do. And then you need to clean off all this old nasty grease. These could be replaced, but you know what? I'm just going to put new grease. The grease that you put on the back of your pads that comes in your new pads, you can grease these with. But I'll do that later. First, I'm going to get this off. Also, one thing you can do is, once you get it all off, you need to take your brake parts cleaner and just clean the crap out of everything. Since you'll be painting this and painting this, it needs to be clean. Now to get these off, you'll probably need a breaker bar, all right? These probably haven't been off in the 30 years this car's existed. So the tip is to open the hood to be able to do this. And they're pretty stuck on there, so we got to move a little bit. Now if you had air tools, I guess it wouldn't matter, but for some reason I'm I'm still in the stone age. I like to use hand tools. Alright, so that one's loose, so what I'm gonna do is move on to the the bottom one. Now with the C3, you couldn't do this. So, one good thing about having a clamshell hood. After you get everything as clean as you think you're going to need, so I use brake clean, a wire brush, and then I use this, ah, use this grease and wax remover. I just, you know, just go over it. I mean, you got dirty hands, right? So you just go over and get it as clean as you can. Now, I think the caliper paint is better than like, let's say normal paint, where I think it sticks a little bit better to dirtier stuff. So I got some dirt off on that, but I think it'll be okay. It's even cleaner than it was. So let's go ahead and uh, I use the sheet to mask off the rest of the engine bay. Um, I also use tape around this brake line and also this rubber seal inside. So you have to make sure you mask this stuff off. You don't want paint on it. When it comes to painting, I use this red duplicolor caliper paint. I don't know if that's any better than engine paint, but it was an extra dollar, so hopefully it works better. But like painting anything, 
light coats every 10 minutes. You want to make sure you focus on the, the top, or at least the part of the caliper that you're going to be able to see. The rest, yeah, you need to paint it, but it doesn't need to look as pretty as the back or the bottom. If you take a look at these rotors, you'll notice that, guess what, they're identical. The only difference is I decided to paint with silver caliper paint the you call it the top hat of the rotor and this outside edge. I also did the other side on the bottom. But if you look at this, I'm sure that when the car was new, these rusty rotors looked just like these painted ones. So you just want to, it's an extra step, it takes you another half an hour or so, but I think it will make that much of a difference when it's on the car because these will start rusting very, very quickly. So, here's another look at the surface. You just see how scored it is. Could be better. Here's the uh, new brake pads versus the old brake pads. So, as you can tell, one has a little bit more meat on them. These ones are actually okay. I might keep them just in case I ever need an extra set somewhere. But um, I don't know. These rotors, I think, are trash as well. But like I said, I've seen worse. So. It might be worth to keep them just to put them on some car that has awful, awful rotors. Alright, we have everything all painted up and ready to go, but the last thing that we need to do is push the piston back into the caliper. Since the pads we're putting on are thicker than the old ones, we have a piece of wood and a clamp. And what I'm going to do is... I'm going to put that piece of wood across here like this, put the clamp here, put the top of it here, and then push that piston back in. I also have my master cylinder open over here so that the excess fluid I'll be able to take out. As you notice, it's really gross. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and suck probably half of that out with a syringe. That way the extra fluid will bubble up, and then I'll top it off with new fluid. Eventually, I will be bleeding the brake fluid on this car with a gravity bleed. But that's not going to be today, it's going to be later, and I just want all brand new fluid. Since if you use the old fluid enough, you can get water in it, and then it starts boiling, and then your brakes can go out when it gets hot. So, I'll go ahead and do that. Now when I do this, I like to watch my uh, master cylinder, because while you spin the clamp in, you'll be able to see fluid bubbling back up in the master. And also make sure you pump your pedal whenever you get back in the car. So this is only going to go a certain distance. I'm going to go ahead and let it go. That should be enough so that the brake pads fit inside when we put it on the rotor. So before you put your pads in, make sure they have these the uh, warnings that you have low brake pads. With this car, I don't know if you'll ever get to that point, but maybe. But also you want to make sure you put this grease on the back of both pads. You can be pretty liberal with this stuff. What it does is it prevents the pad from squeaking on the, the piston and it prevents the other pad from squeaking on the inside of the caliper. It's the same stuff that you use on those guide pins that are in the bracket. This is hard to do with one hand. There we go. one here is number two And then when you put these in, how it works is they just slide into the bracket, obviously contact side toward the rotor like this, and then you attach your caliper bottom bolt and then just slap it in like that. Alright, once you slide the caliper up into place and bolt it down, you're basically done and you can put your wheel back on. So, there's new pads, painted caliper, new rotor, 
Now I have two out of four done. So the backs, I'm sure, will be take just as much time. I feel like if you did this without painting anything, it would be a good hour and a half maybe. Since you have to paint it, it takes a lot longer than like just a normal brake job would do. So, like I said, eventually I'm going to bleed the brake fluid or let the brake fluid gravity bleed out of the car. That way, I have a nice new brake fluid. Who knows when's the last time they did it? I mean, the car is from 1985. It could have been 10 years ago. It could have been 20 years ago. Who knows? So, that will be in another video. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, the C4 is coming along very slowly. It looks a lot better than it used to. Um, I still have all the interior stuff to do and a bunch of other stuff. But, you know, little by little, we'll get it to that daily driver status. Actually, I drive it at least three times a week. So it basically already is daily driver, just in my level that I like my cars. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching.